Okay, so I've been busy over the last 24 hours and have progressed the project to the next stage and I thought I would do a little catch up so you can see what I've been up to. So all of the pieces I showed you in the last videos with the drill and the calico and the fabric are now all joined up. Ooh. So if I turn over this piece you can see the calico, the drill and the calico was stitched with these long lines first then when they were pressed flat I zigzagged, zigzagged stitch oh that's a tongue twister around the edge so that those two pieces are nice and um, stable and then once that was done I stitched the blue fabric to the drill and you can see that line there I haven't um, stitched in like matching colours um, just because I'm using up old bits of thread that I've had from previous projects to try and clear out my thread collection so that's why it's all wrong colours and uh, then once the um, taffeta was attached to those pieces I've overlocked around the edges because I'm not going to have time to make proper lining and um, it was starting to fray already with just minimal handling and um, I didn't want it to tickle me to death on the night. So all of those pieces are done and are ready to be stitched together. And this is the um, front part of the bodice, which is going to be hidden from view. This is a design in which the um, two pieces here are actually hidden beneath the stomacher so that, the, um, so that these pieces of fabric can take the tension, uh, which will run in that direction, holding it on me. Hopefully not too much because it'll fit really well over a boned corset, but there will be a little bit of tension. So um, I wanted the zip to get in and out really, really easily um, because I won't have a lady's maid there to dress me and then stitch me into my dress like they used to in the past where they would have the, the front stomacher perhaps already sewn on one side and then close it over once the underneath was laced and then literally hand stitch them into place. I think it even has that at the beginning of Dangerous Liaisons that you see the maid starting to stitch her in, into the first gown she wears going closest character. So um, it was interesting making this because I kept running up into my um, perfectionism streak and thinking, oh, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. But it's a fancy dress costume I may wear it only like once in my life. So I've had to really secure that shit, Hudson. Um, so with the zip, I used to be really scared of inserting zips, but it's really easy now. All I do is I put the two pieces together, which are going to have the zip and I do um, a tack down the point where the zip is going to hold the pieces of fabric together and then I press that open and then I lay the zip on the top obviously with the front facing that way I'll, I think I've inserted about three zips the one way around in my life in the early days and I never do it now because I learnt the hard way so you make sure that the zip is kind of facing the right way and then tack it into place and then use the zip foot to um, stitch it into place. And when I try this on for my first fitting, which I obviously haven't done yet because everything's in pieces as you can see, I'll see whether I need to top stitch to really, really hold that front seam together. Because my only concern is that because I haven't top stitched it, if it's under too much stress, it'll actually add like a, I don't know, almost a centimeter um, when I don't want any uh, extra room um, in the bodice. So that's where that is at. Here, um, this is something I've learned from a blog, an amazing blog that I found online for, from someone who makes costumes. And um, the idea here, I'm trying to do this one-handed, it's a bit tricky, is that I will attached, attach, sorry, this half of this snap tape this is the same kind of stuff which is at the bottom of duvet covers um, I'll attach this part to the stomacher so I'll make the stomacher that goes over the top and it's like an inch higher up here and it's a couple of inches lower down there in the correct shape that it needs to be for the design and then put these on to hold the stomacher in place when I'm wearing it now I'm probably going to put a couple of hooks and eyes up in the corners as well just to be sure and the only and I've never done this before. This is entirely experimental, so I'm a bit nervous. 
um, but I'm hoping it's going to work. They're certainly secure enough to hold it in place. What I'm worried about is that people will be able to see something, that it won't be flush to my body. Um, so what I've done is I've made sure that I've avoided the, um, the seam. So when I stitch the bodice together, those this line is going to have like a couple of like two or three millimeters of blue fabric before we even get to the tape and also the design is such that at the edge when the stomacher is in place there's a bit of frou-frou frill that runs all the way down the front of the dress so I'm hoping that any kind of white or something like that will be hidden by the the frilly loveliness I've never worn anything frilly for years, not since I was a child, so I'm a little bit nervous about this. Can I pull this frill off? I don't know. Oh, okay, so that's where that's at. So I'm really hoping this will work. It may be a disaster. Let's hope not, because it's uh, now less than two weeks to the ball. Yay! Oh my god. Okay, so what else have I been doing? I have drawn up my sleeve, uh, adapted sleeve block. Now with the Georgian sleeve, they were very, very tightly fitted and they didn't have much gathering. In fact, I haven't seen any gathering at the top of the sleeve crown. Now, my basic sleeve block has quite a lot of ease around the crown because I like the slightly peaked look that you have in um, the, uh, the more uh, kind of low key Victorian sleeves, not the full leg of mutton, but just a little bit of a peak. It, it's really comfortable to wear and it looks nice. So with this one, I've lowered the crown. The crown of the sleeve is usually up here and I've lowered it right down and smoothed it out um, so that there's not too much gathering at the top. Um, and I've also brought in the edges a couple of centimetres on each side um, to make it a tighter fit across the upper arm. Um, and I made it up in the horrible pink fabric I showed you before and um, mocked it all up together, tried it on. The fit isn't what I would consider perfect but it's good enough, which is my lesson for this costume is good enough is good enough. So I could have spent an entire day fitting this new sleeve pattern and decided that it was not worth it. So I'm feeling quite proud of winning that battle with my inner perfectionist. With these sleeves, um, because I don't want to be too hot on the night because there's going to be dancing and everything, I've only um, backed it with the drill, not the um, calico as well, um, just to stabilise it. <clears throat> and then I have started on my Glorious frou-frou cuffs. Whoa. So here we go. This is the beginning of the um, really ridiculously long um, kind of cuff and flounce that comes out from the bottom um, of the sleeve. Um, and this is a collection of three um, pieces of taffeta. And you can, I'll draw back a little bit so you can see the, the shape of that. Now this point will go at the back of my elbow and um, will kind of add out to the flounce. So when I attach it, this will be gathered up and then attached to the bottom of the um, sleeve. Now what I need to do, and I haven't been able to source it yet, is to get some um, fancy white lace to go on the inside of the cuff to hang down um, to be more realistic. Um, but I haven't got that yet. I'm a little bit worried about that, but never mind. Um, the lace I attached with a zigzag stitch. Um, I overlocked the edges and then attached it with a zigzag. I started with a straight stitch, but the lace kept curling up, so I've zigzag stitched it. And because it's the same colour as the lace, you can't see it, so I'm quite pleased about that. Um, and I've made the most horrendously fake pannier, which I, I haven't quite got the courage to show you on video yet, um, because they are such a travesty. Um, ugh. Oh my goodness. Anyway, um, so that's what also... Uh